in the uh, scroll saw woodworking and craft magazine a few months back, I saw these candle sticks, and I thought that's that's impossible. I mean, there's no way you can do that. But I read the article and and figured out how he did it and practiced for a while and managed to come up with a with a couple of these. These are three of mine, and it's really simpler than it, than it looks when you first look at it. The guy that designed that was uh, uh, Bruce Pratt. He lives in Boston, Massachusetts, and, he, and he, he's not like me. He's not a full-time scroller. He scrolls on the weekends. He, he, has, he works for a living, too. Uh, I change, I've changed a few little things here and there on some of the things I do, but <coughs> basically it's the same thing he was doing. Uh, so first thing I'll do, I'm going I'm to demonstrate cutting a candle stick, and then, and then I'm going to demonstrate cutting the uh, Christmas, uh, candy, candy cane, I think they call it, the candy cane. And after I finish that, uh, Bruce and I got together this morning and uh, uh, cut both items and took some pictures. So we, we had the pictures, and w once I get through with this, and of course you can stop me anytime you want to and ask questions while, we're, while, we're, while I'm working, but when I get through with the presentation, we're going to have a presentation on the, on the screen up here of the things we took pictures of this morning, which will be each step that, we took, that I take when I'm demonstrating it. And uh, it'll give you another chance to, to come up with more questions if you have them, and we'll try to explain you know, what we did and why we did it. So uh, first off, you start with, and I don't have a blank one, but you start with a uh, piece of wood, and you'll have to, you'll have to make friends with a turner. <laughs> for, you, for, you people, for you people that are new that don't know it, we have a thing going on between me and the turners. So I call them wood wasters because I, I tell them they take a big piece of wood that big and you know that thick and they keep cutting it down. And they got a pile of, pile of stuff on the floor about that big and they come up with a little bowl about that size. So I, I call them wood wasters. I still treat them nice because they do stuff like this for me. Uh, but, you, you get you get a, a piece of wood turn uh, about an inch and a quarter by eight inches. The pattern this may be a little hard to see because I, I like I like to work with red red and green patterns. I find, it, it, this way okay. yeah. I find it easier on my eyes to cut with a with green lines or red lines than it does with black lines. You got a black blade and you start cutting a lot on those black lines, and the first thing you know, your eyes start crossing. But that, that's a pattern. And what you do is cut that pattern out all the way around, including those little round circles on the ends. And they're, they're attached, you leave them attached. And then you wrap it, wrap it around your, your bar, and you try to make sure that those lines come together when you, when you match it up like that. That's folded down over the end. Now the, reason, the reason you need that end on there is because that is what you line your blade up with on your, your saw. Uh, I don't know what blade they've got in that, in that saw. Let's see yes. if I can. That's one left over from the show. Okay. Right. Huh? You got $10 here right there. Here, here again, for this project, I use a, a uh, spiral blade. What was that? Some people know what spiral <laughs> blade is. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I do use a spiral blade. <laughs> he, he uses spiral blades. Almost exclusively, don't you? Except for when I do in terms of it. It does a real good job with it. And uh, if you start, if you learn on a spiral blade, I think it's difficult to switch over. If you learn on a straight blade, it's difficult to switch back because with a straight blade, when you make a when you make a turn, you stop and you you literally push that piece of wood against the back of the blade as you make the turn. If you got a spiral blade in there, when you push against the back, you just cut out the other side. <laughs> so you have to be real careful with that. I had tried it a time or two before and found out I didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been gone too long now, George, if you're using spire blades. <laughs> <laughs> Things do change, don't they? You want you need the stool or do you want to I will in a few minutes. Let me go ahead and mm -hmm. get this blade in here. I just wanted to apologize first for using a spiral blade. <laughs> I was probably it is not clear. <laughs> George, next thing you know, you're going to be using a laser engraver. First thing you know, I'll be turning, won't I? <laughs> By the way, they had a turner's meeting here uh, a couple of weeks ago, 
and Bruce suggested I drop by, so I did. And I walked in the door, and I think all eyes turned that way and said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, I came here to try to convert you guys to something good like scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> as always, you want your blade as tight as you can without busting loose. George, on those dowels you're having the woodworkers or the turners turn for you, can you just buy a dowel like hardware store? Yeah, you could if you can get an inch, you can get an inch and a quarter dowel. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But I've done something. Well, as you can see, you can do. Well, that's a pretty piece of wood there. You won't, yeah. you won't get that in a dowel. No. Uh, this, of course, is, is three pieces of wood. You get two pieces of light wood and a dark, <coughs> dark piece in between. And uh, you, can, you can tell what it is when you turn it that way. Uh, I was looking at it one day, I turned it that way, and look, it's got a funny design on it. You don't know what you're going to come up with. I've got some at home I'm working on now. I just got, them, got somebody to turn them for me the other day. And it's four pieces. Raise it up a little, little higher. higher. Something wrong. Higher. <coughs> they're, four, they're four, three quarter. Uh, Half, half piece. Anyway, four pieces put together, so it'll be uh, red, white, red, and white. I don't know what it's going to look like when I come. I'm kind of anxious to cut one and see what it's going to look like. <coughs> to, to start this, and this is where we use a lot, a lot of tape, uh, to, to set this up, you you. You've got the line. There's a there's a A and right, there's a A and B on the pattern. You start with your with your A side, and and that's that's where you're going to start cutting. You'll cut in from from the side here, but you've got to have something to hold this in place as you turn it. Otherwise, it it'll go it'll go everywhere. So I've, I've made this piece a fence. Put a piece of tape on the bottom of it. Now I'll take this and and line it up straight with, with this thing. I, you could probably divide this by three and, and, and measure it out. But if you, if you lay this on there and line that up with the blade, that tells you exactly how far you need to be from that blade with your fence. So the fence is going to go right there. And I'll take the paper off of that, line it up. It doesn't slide easy with the tape on it. Right, now that, that has my, my fence set. I can work against that. <clears throat> the thing you need to remember now, once you start cutting, <coughs> is always have the part of the, of the pattern or the line facing directly up. Raise it well. Way high up there? Yeah, yeah. Always have your line up, up high. And cutting this is kind of like rubbing your head and patting your stomach at the same time and trying to switch. So you'll get used to it after a while, but you'll notice how, how slow I cut. Uh, the slower you cut or the smoother you can cut, the less work you have later. Yeah, you, because you'll have to sand all that later. And the spiral blade does leave a fairly rough, rough surface. So I'll begin, I'll begin with this one by, by entering right where that A is. Enter into the, can you see it? And I don't have it. Yeah, there's a foot pedal. to take over and start pulling this piece away from it rather than turning it. If you, to, make, to make the cut and stay on that line, you gently push it forward and at the same time you're turning, turning it to the right. I hit the line every once in a while. <laughs> Not too regular. <laughs> This is the number five spiral blade. The article in the magazine said to use the number three. Uh, but being a novice at using uh, 
I don't blade, I wasn't getting enough opening in it, so I wanted something that got a little bit more of an opening, so I'm using a number five. I found on the uh, candy cane the same thing is true. The end of the line is going down at an angle. Now I'll have to turn it and, and come off. So what I you don't turn it, you, you pull it straight off like this. You hold it good and tight, you pull it straight out. Hmm. Try to get some of that sawdust out of there. What kind of wood is it? What kind of wood is it? I think it's Osage orange. It looks like it's from beer. <laughs> I think that's going to be a pretty one. Mm -hmm. You got a pocket? Uh, <laughs> <over there. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to take that off yet, but I'm going to cut the other side first. <coughs> so with that, then you you simply turn. <laughs> what am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, turn turn to, to the B, and you want to go in with the B. You put the B right on the blade like that before you start, and do the same thing. Go into it and, and come down from there. In the event you don't keep that right on the line or you, if you turn it a little bit too much, you'll, you'll find, and you'll find it on some of these, uh, this one for example, you notice how thick, <laughs> yeah. you to play to the audience here, yeah, no, no, no. You, you notice how thick it is on this side, it's about like it's supposed to be. On this side I got it, I turned it a little bit too much and of course it cut it down, it's, it's real thin on there. So. If you keep it at a distance, not too bad. I thought you were just being creative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very creative. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Turners call that a feature. <laughs> yeah. In the event, let's see if it will come off. Okay. In the event it doesn't just drop out, the best thing to do is take it and go back in here with this machine cut off, feed it, feed it back in about halfway, and be sure you go in the right direction. <laughs> Turn it back on and, and pull this straight out again. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> if you go in the other direction, you start over. <laughs> They cut that piece off. Now yeah, that one came out. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's like you had to save that piece. <laughs> no, I'm kind of like turning. I got a lot of scrap on this one. <laughs> if you have trouble getting the pattern, I, this is the one thing that I glue the pattern directly to the wood. Uh, just about everything I, I do, I generally put. Uh, the blue painter's, uh, painter's tape uh, on the piece of wood and stick my pattern on top of it. It makes it come off real clean. You don't have to 
put any thinner on it, anything. But with this, you can take you can dab it with a little bit of paint thinner to make that glue release and, and it will come right off. Now you see how see how rough that is. So now the next thing you do, uh, and I have. I believe they have sets of these here at the store, right? Uh, Where's the key? Up on the top there, or you can go behind the board. Oh, there you go. start to work once you get through cutting. Uh, I'm not going to do much sanding here because I don't have, well there's a dust system there but I don't, I'm not going to control them hooking it up. Uh, don't have a drill press or you prefer doing it another way, uh, you can take a take a dowel, wrap a piece of sandpaper around it, and, and do it by hand. I'll, I'll probably end up, even after using that, I'll end up doing some of it by hand. And of course, when you get up into the, into the top part, you, you take it off a dowel and do it with your finger. But you can you shine that up real good, take your pattern off, sand that slightly, and then you're ready, you're ready to put your holes in it for your uh, hardware. So you want to find the center of the top and the center of the bottom, which I already have for the, the turned it. And uh, on the on the top. In order to fit the hardware that, that I'm using, this this is hardware. Uh, they, they're getting some of this in the store here. It'll be in by the end of the week. So if you if you want to turn some of these, you want to make some of these, you can make you can make them all week and come in here the first of next week and pick up your hardware. And they're gonna have this particular hardware on, on hand. I get more chuck keys that way. Ready to cut. 
cut this, you know you've got to have something to help you hold it. If you hold it like that and it catches, it's going to spin and probably hurt your hand. So you need to use something like this and, and clamp it. And then, turn, and then turn this. And turn it so that will, that will heal against that back. So if it catches mad, it will do that and it won't spin around and hurt you. Notice the piece of blue tape I put on there. I put that on this morning, so that's that's the depth that I need to do my hardware. I think it's about 15, 16. Okay. Deeper, it won't matter, but if you wanted that, that depth. So that, that's, your, that's your top one. And the bottom one actually doesn't call for drilling at all, but I find that uh, when you put this on, it sits right up on top like that. And I think it looks better if it's down a little bit. So I've been taking this. I'm taking now, so if anybody wants one, I think I printed 15, but we've got a printer of this, so if you want more than that, we'll, we'll run you some copies on it. Uh, big around that I can put the little, uh, my wife's got some little candles about an inch and a half in diameter and about that tall mm -hmm. and I want to make some for that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether we're going to be able to just put it on the computer and blow it up or whether we'll have to change some dimensions on it, but I'll, I'll know in a few weeks, so okay. check back. <laughs> You don't have to go very deep on this. Uh, let's see if that's enough. It's just to make it fit down. It just fits down on there a little close. And you could take take it and sand that sand that at an angle, and, and really make it look tight on there. But it doesn't show up too bad. Once you once you get the screw in, the screw goes up through that end of that. And I do like to 
uh, pre-drill it. Splitting out when I put the screw in, I like to pre-drill it, so I just drill, drill a little bit down here. I got If I was at home, I'd be using electric drill. <laughs> you at least make a noise with your mouth. Like <laughs> 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 circle and then take your four a bit big enough for your base and set it down in there and not use the metal base. Yeah well you could you can make your own bases for them. You, you'd have to either do that or bevel from looking at this angle well most people are going to look down from the table but looking at this angle it looks kind of awkward. Yeah well you see a difference here too in the way the way the top fits on that one right. and this one. Right right. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this one this one fits as, as the way it shows in the book. But I think it. Yeah, you know, I didn't like the way. I kind of like the way that goes yeah. down there. It's a little larger hole and drop it down there. You, you can adapt it to suit yourself, or suit your wife as I do. <laughs> I try. What were those that hardware set up for? Turners. Big one. The hardware it wasn't set up for this. Yeah. Yeah, it comes from Penn. It came from Penn State for these firewood. Yeah, I bought the ones I got from Penn State, but he's. Like I said, they're, they're, stock, they're going to be stocking this particular one here, and they'll have it. Uh, they're designed specifically. If, if, you, if you decide tonight that you're going to make some of these candles, candlesticks, and you want some of that hardware, it would be helpful if you would go by the desk and tell Helga uh, how many you want, because uh, she's going to place the order first thing in the morning, and it'll be in sometime probably Thursday or Friday, no later than Friday, and you'll be able to pick them up the first next week. You won't have it done. Ready for that by then. Yeah, but there's no reason you could use that on a turn. Can I say that's also cool? Couldn't use that. You can use the same stuff on a turn. Oh, yeah, it's like a whole. Yeah. I'd like to see returns. What are those little kits around, George? I think it's $5.95, somewhere around six bucks a piece. For the top and bottom? For the top and bottom and the screws. Is that brass coated? I assume it's just coated, George. 
Cool. Heather's just told me a place to order tonight. We'll have it here for Saturday morning. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Okay. Wow. Good. Yeah, so, so if you would, you know, place your order now and help her know how many to order and who to put in for the yeah. future, too. Yeah. 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 No, it didn't. Yeah. 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 What did you say you got? Out of uh, Scrolls Hall uh, Workshop and Crafts Magazine. Would that be on the website? No. Probably. I don't know. I, I take the magazine. I take a couple of the Scrolls Hall Magazines. Halloween friends and how to win pins and friends and treat them. Get out on your circle and go home and do wives. Go wonder where you can do it. Yeah, well, it's impossible to use that again. I mean, and so I get this dust all over there. Dangerously close to eyeshadow. Well, that, that's about a three quarter inch piece by an inch and a half. It, whatever scrap you've got. Anything's got a straight edge or you can line it up on there when you get ready to use it. Yeah, you're, you're already in trouble with yourself if you're sure. Yeah, I'll just wait to finish. Hey, George. I don't understand the concept of it being so large. Being what? So large. What? The candlestick. Stop. Why is it so big? Oh, God. Compared to what? <laughs> you know, he, does a, he does micro. Yeah. <laughs> he takes a stamp and makes a puzzle out of it. <laughs> I don't know why he wears his glasses. <laughs> you know, also know why he's sitting far enough away from George. <laughs> <laughs> Troublemaker. <laughs> For the longest time, George and I would have competitions to see who could make things smaller. He won. <laughs> Hands down. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to. <coughs> we're going to make some of these. Here's one that Bruce came up with and said we were working on some of this. And here's one we made this morning. And uh, of course, I've, I've sanded it down so it works real good. It, it, that's come apart. Uh, I've seen these painted like this, which, which I like. My, in fact, my wife had enough of these at Christmas. We have a big mirror in the living room. She drapes some stuff on it like that and hung these online. It was real pretty, the red and white. Uh, I've also seen them take take these, <coughs> paint one of them red and one of them white, and then put them back together like that. You just drill a hole. You want to drill a hole through it to put a hook in it, to hang it on your Christmas tree or wherever you decide you want to use it. Now, with this, <coughs> you can use it flat on the table, but I found that to be a little, little hard to handle. Uh, one of the members came up with the idea of, of making a making a block with a V in it which was an improvement over having it on the table because you didn't have a tendency to do this with it, at least directly it didn't close. But we found out uh, another one came up, with a friend of mine really, that came up with this. And you make, these are half inch dowels. Uh, I, I looked two or three places before I found some of them, found some of them made out of uh, poplar. Most of them, excuse me, most of them are hardwood. And I, I hadn't cut in hardwood yet. I don't think it'd be any problem cutting hardwood. But I just wanted something soft because I'm going to paint it anyway and doesn't need the grain in it. So I found these at, uh, at Lowe's, the, the poplar. So uh, it's a half inch dial, and we made these two blocks. And it, these holes are about 9 16 It wouldn't matter if they were slightly larger than that even. And all you want to do is direct it right straight, and it makes it easier when you're using it. Here again, <coughs> put a couple pieces of two-sided tape on it. Line it up with my blade. Thank you. So what you what you're doing here, you, you're entering this right right in the center. So you know you could, you could probably do it from over here since it's a spiral blade. It wouldn't matter. Uh, I'm just used to working from the front of the machine. First, I've got to cut the end off this. I forgot to do that. Uh, 
Spiral and blade, man. Spiral blade. Right. <laughs> He's learning. He's learning. Magic. 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 I'll give him some money someday. It's going to be right. <laughs> That's just a matter of following the line and uh, turning and pushing at the same time. Like I said, like patting your head and rubbing your stomach and reversing it. And you have to work, be a little bit cooler than me in order to do it. And you try to do it as smoothly as possible because any rough area in there, you got the sand dry right later. Technique you don't leave a web in the center, are you? Hmm. Well, this technique there's no web in the center, like I'm not. No, no, it's, it's not quite good. Yeah. And with this, you could take, uh, in fact, these patterns are longer than the ones they had in the book. Uh, they were using 3 8 material and uh, short patterns, and I wanted longer, longer pieces. So I'm using half inch and I made them longer, but you could take these and, and put them all the way down here if you want a, a real long one. It's just not a continuum that line as far as you want it. Yeah, Rob, look at him with a spiral blade there. You got another one going over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Now when I get to the end, I've got to cut that off. Of if you extended that same idea a little further and put another one of the square blocks on this side, it keeps this end from going right there. Yeah. Might help, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, what's it doing? But once, when I get to the end of uh, the end of the unit, because uh, you can't go left or right to cut this one off, so what you do is just turn. Just cutting the top and bottom at the same time. So it is possible. Shake all this sawdust you can get out of there because sometimes they're hard to take apart. Uh, let's see if this one's going to come apart. You got sticks of DNA there. <laughs> You're getting these CDC guys all excited there, George. Yeah. 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 In, in the event this happens, <laughs> there are two things you can do. What is that there? Three things you can do. <laughs> you can do that. Uh, you can find where the, this. Somewhere in here, there's a little high spot or two, this, this binding that keeps it from coming off. And so what you can do with that is to uh, <clears throat> take something like this and find that high spot, put it down on something, and, and, and cut that high spot off to, to release it so it will turn. Uh, do this one, George. <laughs> I got it, I got it. You got it's, it? it's coming now. Right. There you go. Let's see that that came right out. Uh, here again, you you've just started. If you've got a Dremel tool or something of that sort, now this 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 is a little bit larger than the, than the circle. And that's what I use on that one. The reason it works so good. But you can take this and, and sand it in there. Uh, if you want to do it by hand, here again, you can take a uh, piece of dowel <coughs> take a piece of dowel and a piece of sandpaper, just wrap your sandpaper around it and go into that groove like that and sand it out. When you get that sanded out good, you get your pattern off, and you, you I, I like the red and white, I painted, painted the white inside first and then come back and just paint the the red on the outside. You, in the meantime, you want to drill a hole in that so you can hang it up on the hooks on it to hang it up. Okay. So that, uh, now you know all I know.
<laughs> All right, we're uh, we're going to take about a five minute break, get up, go to the restroom, or get something to eat or drink out there, and come back in five minutes. We're going to run this thing all night long. So just make it quick, come back, stretch your legs, come back, and we'll finish the last half with the with the well, What we're going to do is show you just what I've done and still pictures, and make it, may make it sink in a little bit. So just make it very quick if you could, please. You've probably already seen it all, but it might, might help to get it in your mind a little. little better by seeing it on the screen and uh, they, he's going to turn them over one one at a time like that and if you have any questions on any part of it just go ahead and shout out and we'll see if we can answer them because that's your pattern that shows how to cut your pattern see how I cut on the line all the way around leaving those round circles actually you only need to leave one of those round circles the one on the top and you, your pattern is marked with the top you don't, you don't really need that part of it I don't know why, why you put it on there Do you have any more patterns? Oh, wait. <coughs> right there. Is that the next one? Yeah, of course, that's the, that's the okay. fence that we've oh, wait. Right. Fence that we made, and that's where we're lining the blade up with, the, with that uh, mark on the... Uh, uh, patterns specifically designed for an inch and a quarter? Is that right, the, the fence? The pattern. Oh, the pattern, yes. yes. The pattern is inch and a quarter yeah. line. Right. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Next? Okay. That, that's lining it up. Once you get it lined up, of course, take that piece with a two-sided tape on it, lay it beside it, stick it on your table. That, there it is, sticking on the table. That gives you the guide. If you don't have that on there, I guarantee you, your lines will look like this when you, when you go along. And you start it at point A and going into it sideways. Could you make a jig like this? No. Because it's got to be able to move sideways too. The that first cut the first cut is a sideways cut. See that's, 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 the, oh, okay. that's getting down to the bottom and coming that's off. That's why you have to use the straight blade. from there. Don't don't turn it there, just come straight off. Yeah, we had somebody at this yeah, show. Yeah. Get the top he, he didn't argue with us, but he couldn't understand why we said you have to use a spiral blade. And he went home and he came back the next day and he says, I know why you gotta use a spiral blade. <laughs> 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 it's killing him. Unbelievable. He wanted to prove one. Another die hard. <laughs> that was after we got both pieces cut and, and, and got them out. Of course, that's a uh, little round uh, drum sand that I have on my drill press that I <clears throat> sand the inside of it. Or you can take a dial and wrap a piece of paper around it and do it by hand like that. Or you can do it without the dial, but it, the dial will save your fingers. That's using your dremel to sand it out. That's set up and drill, drill in your hole. And be sure you use some kind of clamp to keep that thing from twisting, because it'll twist and, and really hurt, you, hurt your hand. Yeah. That, that's cutting the bottom hole. In that, in the, Sampling to see how it would fit in there. Testing. And I pre drill those because <coughs> now th that screw is going to go down, it's going to go down into that, that thin wow, piece. Yeah. So if you don't do that, it may split out. I had that one split out because I always pre drill it. And there it is with the top and bottom on it. You said there was a 3 32nd drill that you had there. That's a little tight. I'd go over to the 8th. Yeah, the one that George drew, when he gave it to me, I tried to turn it. It's pretty tight in there, but it's, it's, tight. it's tight. You use one a little larger. Of course, there's your guide for your uh, other ornaments. Sandy <laughs> King. DNA. And you said that hole was 916? Those are 916s. You could have it a little sloppy in there if you wanted to. You want to be sure it's large enough that when you put the pattern on, you, if you drill it a half inch, you can, you can force one through it a half, a half inch and through it. But with your pattern on there, you want to give just a little bit more clearance than that. Of course, you, once, you, once you drill it, you can still go in there and sand it a little bit and make it, make it larger. And, and I think you made the suggestion it might be better, it might be a little sturdier if we, if we, cut, if we cut this groove a little deeper and get that blade just a little bit closer to this block. He said he noticed that the end of the thing was wiggling a little bit like that. So if you make it sturdier, it would probably be a, probably cut a lot better. 
And you probably cut, unless you're a whole lot better than I am, you will cut two or three before you get a, get one right. <coughs> uh, I had some that I only salvaged one half. I had to go back in and cut half of it off to get, to get it apart. Mm -hmm. See, you can go back and go to the court and do that, and you can still see what you're doing. You made another suggestion that you do it in the middle, but you've got to start then and get to that other thing. You might, you might have a tendency to do that. And that's what you do if you find a high place and you need to cut out, and you cut it out so you can take them apart. And that little Dremel tool works pretty good. I've, I've had a, I've, I've got a Dremel tool sander. You see that one's only, the sanding thing is only about, it's only about that long. I've got one not quite this big around, but it's about an inch, inch and a quarter long, and it was ideal, it worked perfectly. I hadn't used it in years. So if then I found out when I, where I could use it, I tried to go buy some uh, pieces for it and it discontinued it. <laughs> That's good. There That's using sandpaper on the dial to, to finish it off. And we're back to the Anybody else want a pattern? I'll make some if you want some. Let me put, let me put them out on the printer on the copy machine here. I use I use the, the uh, blue uh, carpenter's tape a lot, but on, on these I don't do it. But if you put if you put the pattern, you know, and we did this, one, you know, this one this morning, and I put the pattern on, and you know, five ten minutes later I finished cutting it. I, I just picked it up like this, pulled it right off. But if you let it sit for a couple of hours, like I did the one I used tonight, it, it's going to stick tight. But if it sticks tight, all you do is take a little bit of uh, paint thinner put it on a cloth or a napkin or something, just dab it on, get it wet, and then you just put it right on. The only trouble with that is you have to clean, make sure you clean the glue off before you try to finish it. Or you can heat it up. And make right, you got Yeah, okay, I can follow that. Well, or hair, hair Use your hair dryer. Is that what you're yeah. using? Hair dryer, hair dryer doesn't freeze the Hey, you know, he's picking up all the people. He uses hair dryer. My wife the other day, I need to do a comb. Any other questions? Anything I can help anybody with? Anybody here don't don't have my card? <laughs>